I couldn't stop peeing 12 times before lunch every day. Then I did this. The strangest thing, for the longest time, probably almost two years, I would get to work by 8 a.m. and by the time lunch rolled around, I had urinated at least 10 times, sometimes up to 15. I was getting really frustrated by the frequent visits to the bathroom. It was taking me away from my work and my patients. Why was I peeing so much? What was wrong with me? Today we're going to be talking about urinary frequency, peeing a lot. Turns out I was drinking water all wrong. You're probably asking, how can you be drinking water wrong? Don't you just put it in your mouth and swallow? Well, believe it or not, there is a right way and a wrong way to do it, and it's much more than just putting water in your mouth and swallowing. It makes sense to do it the right way, right? Because after all, we are 70% water. So be sure to stick around to hear that. I'll talk about that soon. And this isn't going to be what you normally hear about when it comes to excessive urination and water intake either. We are gonna go much deeper. I'm gonna give you some information that will really make you think. Excited? Let's go. This is my story about urination. I think I should start with my morning because that might help you understand why. First thing when I wake up in the morning, half glass of water followed by a cup of coffee. Next, I know TMI, bowel movement, followed by exercising in my garage. When I exercise, I usually go pretty hard. I have a love-hate relationship with Sean T. Insanity, so brutally difficult. And when I lift weights, I usually do it with an elevated heart rate, moving quickly from one set to the next. I drink anywhere from 32 to 48 ounces of water while I work out. I sweat a ton, mind you. My clothes are drenched by the time I finish, and sweating usually continues post-shower for several minutes to an hour. Besides prepping the kids for school, walking the dog, nothing much else, and I'm off to work. And I'm sure some of you are saying, well, yeah, you drank a ton of water. It makes sense that you would pee a lot, too. I don't disagree with that, but one thing that is important to know, even after drinking all that water, I would still feel thirsty. Somewhere in my brain, something was triggering a drink water response. Something was telling me I wasn't drinking enough, so I would drink more. And the water I was drinking, I felt like it was just going right through me, passing right through me. It wasn't getting into my cells. And herein lies the problem that led me to the solution that solved all my urination problems. Overnight, I went from peeing up to 15 times before noon to averaging one to two times. My thirst for water dissipated. The solution was really quite simple. Turns out I was missing a very important electrolyte. I had too much water and not enough sodium. I could take electrolyte powder packets, I've done that before, but much easier and less expensive, put five to six salt granules in your mouth suck on them, absorb them through the mucosa in your mouth, which is a super quick way to absorb it. Even though I was drinking all that water, I was actually dehydrated. By sucking on the salt, this is the quickest and best way to get hydrated. I repeat, this is the quickest way to get hydrated. Do me a favor real quick. If you like this kind of information, smiggity smash that like button and subscribe and help a brother out. Back to the salt. I really like Celtic Baja Gold or Himalayan salt. You gotta be careful with regular table salt though. They've been known to have microplastics in them and the quality of the iodine used is in question. With the salts I suggest, place them on your tongue and wait for them to be absorbed. Once absorbed, drink your water a half glass at a time. Drink a half, wait five minutes, then drink another half glass. With the salt you just absorbed, it ensures that water you just drank will go directly into your cells and hydrate you and not just go through you because of an electrolyte imbalance. The salts I mentioned are an excellent source because they contain lots of different and very important minerals too. Himalayan salt, for example, has about 75 minerals. Celtic has about 82 and also has three types of magnesium, magnesium chloride, magnesium bromide, and magnesium sulfate, which are extremely beneficial and essential for hydration and our health in so many ways. And also something we're often quite deficient in. So let's talk about how to drink water the right way, because believe it or not, there is a right and wrong time to drink water. Here are a couple water drinking rules to live by. When you wake up in the morning, have a half glass. 30 minutes before meals, have a half glass. Drink a half glass of water throughout the day until you get to eight full glasses. Don't drink with a meal or right after. It dilutes the acid in your stomach and alters digestion. If you feel thirsty during or right after a meal, you're probably dehydrated. Of course, drink when you're thirsty, when you get that signal, but maybe during or after a meal, just a few gulps, not an entire glass. It is extremely important we drink water at the right times. It helps to ensure our digestive system works optimally. It helps you to avoid issues like constipation. It also ensures you are utilizing water in the most effective way because water is needed for every single body function. I think it's also important to cover how much water should the average adult be drinking in a day. Kind of a controversial topic. 
In order to figure out how much we need, probably best to look at how much water we lose in a day. We should replace what we lose, right? From our kidneys to our bladder to urination, we lose about one and a half quarts or six cups. Through our skin, we lose about half a quart or two cups. When we poop, we lose about three tenths or 1.2 cups. And out of our lungs, about 0.2 of a quart or eight tenths of a cup. That equals 10 cups or 10 eight ounce glasses of water per day. Ideally, we would drink about eight cups per day. The other two, ideally, would come from fruits and veggies. There are differences, of course, day to day. Maybe it's extremely hot or throwing some high sweat activities like Sean T. Insanity I like to do, or a sauna. We may sweat much more, so that's something to pay attention to, a reason we may need a bit more hydration in the day. There are some pretty serious consequences of dehydration too, and it is so super common as we age. So what happens in our bodies when we aren't getting water to our cells? Well, the body must manage the water deficit, and it does so by first releasing a hormone called histamine. Histamine regulates water flow and keeps the cells hydrated. Histamine also plays a huge role in allergy response, so not having enough water can make your allergies much worse. Another thing the body does when water is needed is pulled first from the stomach, or the stomach lining. Our stomachs are full of acid, right? That's how we digest food. Hydrochloric acid, which we need to break down food. Our stomach lining is full of sodium bicarbonate, which keeps the acid contained. Acid in the wrong places causes big problems, right? When water is taken from our stomach lining, it becomes thin and less able to deal with stomach acid effectively, exposing us to risks like stomach ulcers or even a perforation, which is a medical emergency. So what about diabetes and high blood sugar? This can happen in a few ways with dehydration. Blood becomes more concentrated. The ratio of blood sugar to water increases, causing blood sugar levels to rise. Dehydration also has an effect on insulin. We need water to make insulin. Without it, sugar cannot enter the cell. The hypothalamus releases another hormone called vasopressin, which tells the kidneys to retain water, but also tells the liver to produce sugar. This can affect insulin regulation too. So dehydration also puts pressure on your adrenals and your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight response. This is why a salt deficiency could manifest as stress, anxiety, and poor sleep. If you're having issues with sleep, try this one thing out. Put just a little bit of sea salt on your tongue right before bed. Absorb it. Go to sleep. See how much better your sleep is. Well, I think that's all I will cover for now. I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you like learning about life-changing healthy interventions, you got to check this video out right here. Nurse Chris out.